The following is a Barrett Sports Media production. <laughs> We do the digging so you don't have to. We've got breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking news. Bringing you the biggest stories from the industry you care about. This is the Media Noise Podcast. Well, let's hear it. Now, here's your host, Dimitri Ravanos. Rate, review, and subscribe to the show on your platform of choice. That is how more people discover this show and how we get to keep making more episodes. Thanks for taking the time to join me today. We are going to go heavy into the world of ESPN Radio and specifically ESPN New York as the network, or excuse me, the station rather, uh, and the network have both announced big changes that are coming to their lineups. Garrett Seawright is going to talk about it from the network angle. Derek Futterman from the local angle. They are right around the corner. But first, most people that listen to this show are in the business. So as I tell you how the sausage is made, it will not surprise you that we record the interviews and then I go back and record the intro. I want today's intro to sort of be about what you are going to hear because I want to be clear with my opinion. I think these lineup changes are wins for both the network and for ESPN New York. I think it solves the problem of ESPN's national network sounding too much like a New York radio station and ignoring where the majority of their affiliates are. And it also solves ESPN New York's problem of not having dedicated local talent between their morning show and which doesn't even go all the way through the end of morning drive or didn't uh, and their afternoon show. There are going to be things that are said in here that sound very critical of ESPN, but I I do want to make it clear that I think at the end of the day, the network and the radio station both scored big wins with these changes, particularly, uh, and I talk about this a little bit more with Garrett Seawright, I love the night show pairing of Amber Wilson and Joe Fortenbaugh. Those are two people that have had a lot of success in major markets. Those are two natural radio talents. Um, I think that those two, that pairing, is built for the long term, and I don't know when. I don't have any inside information on this. This is just a gut feeling because of how good those two are. The idea is not for them to stay at 7 to 9 p.m. forever. Obviously, time will tell. That is just a guess at this moment uh, with no real evidence to sort of say that I am the smartest boy in the room or not. But anyway, we are going to cover this from both the local and national angle uh, on the entire episode of Media Noise today. Let's take a look at the ESPN radio moves from a local perspective now. Derek Futterman writes a lot of great features for us on the site. He is also a New York local. And so right now, Derek, I want you to answer me not from your Barrett Sports Media brain, but answer me from the New York sports fan brain. How distant um, in a fan's mind, I'm not talking about ratings, I'm talking about perception wise. How big was the gap between WFAN and ESPN New York in terms of local programming until this announcement was made? Uh, Large. I mean, the ratings book for the second month just came out and WFAN is pretty much beating ESPN New York in all categories. And this has been something consistent we've seen for many years. And now since 98.7 ESPN New York is under Good Karma Brands Management, uh, figure now they're trying to compete with WFAN in this marketplace. And that morning show with Dave Rothenberg and Rick DiPietro now getting that extra hour going from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. And the only national programming now until 10 p.m. at night will be Mike Greenberg. And Greenberg himself is a Jets fan, and he brings a lot of New York perspectives. So the fact that he'll be on from 10 to 12, that show is simulcast uh, nationally around the country. I mean, ESPN New York, again, trying to position themselves to compete with the fan. You got Barton Hahn from 12 to 3. And of course, the Michael K show, which just celebrated 20 years on the air a few weeks ago in New York City. That's from three to seven. And then Dan Graca takes you home from seven to 10. And of course, the station is also the flagship home of the New York Knicks and the New York Rangers. And it also broadcast New York uh, Jets football as well. So the station, again, trying to compete with WFN. We'll see how it goes. But it's certainly a move that ESPN New York, uh, people were wondering if they were going to make it for years. And now we're seeing that it's finally coming through. 
So one of the things that strikes me as really interesting about this, because this has nothing to do with the ESPN lineup shuffle, is that DPH on Rothenberg now expands to be a full morning show. I mean, three hours is is nothing to sneeze at, but ending a morning show at 8 a.m. is bananas. Like, it's hard to wrap your head around if you did not <laughs> understand what the ESPN commitments were there. Um, I know that Boomer and Geo is a monster to try and overcome in the mornings, but certainly four hours of local as opposed to in the in the monitored period, two hours of local followed by two hours of national. That has to be the kind of thing that not only gives you juice for the ratings, if you're in that building, that has to give you some adrenaline going into every day. Oh, of course. And I mean, DPH on Rothenberg has turned out to be a pretty compelling, a pretty entertaining combination on the air. I mean, if we look again at the winter book, it was 6.1 to 1.8 last month. I mean, that that's really not close. WFAN is, has been crushing 9870 SPM in the ratings, and they know this. I mean, but this is a move now that they're going to make to try to even things out. And it may not happen instantly, but if the show keeps producing entertaining content, and certainly that combination has the potential to do that, there's a real chance that it could become a ratings battle in New York in the mornings uh, on sports radio. And again, 98.7 really thrives with the flagships, the Knicks, the Rangers, the Jets. But the more local programming now figure that it should be able to compete with the fan a lot more down the road. So give me the New York perspective on this, because from a national perspective, I always thought Bart and Han, it was a perfectly fine show. It just didn't belong on a national stage. It was still a New York radio show every time. I would listen to it. Now that it goes back to being exclusively a New York radio show, as a New Yorker, does that feel right to you? Yeah. I mean, some Alan Hahn is on MSG Networks all the time. I mean, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's providing Knicks coverage, so we always see him around. Bart Scott, Jets coverage on SMY. So these are two local voices, and they got the chance to go national, and New York sports is certainly followed nationally. I mean, there are New Yorkers who live everywhere in the United right. States, so it's good coverage to hear. But again, the way radio is going and media in general, where you can find all this stuff on digital platforms anyway, you can go online, you can do it on an app. There's no real reason necessarily to stream it you know, have to simulcast it nationally. You can really get it from anywhere. I mean, you can listen to 9870 SPN uh, just by telling your smart speaker or using an app. So these days, I, I think Barton Han going to a local show, yeah, I, I think it is really good for New Yorkers and it certainly gives them something to compete with now, uh, Tiki and Turney in the afternoon on the fans. Well, stop me if you've heard this line before. ESPN Radio is uh, undergoing a bit of a lineup shuffle that is part of, I mean, look, that's what this whole episode is about because it is tied to the shakeup at ESPN New York. Garrett Seawright writes for our site, obviously, one of the editors, also a former PD that has dealt with this on the affiliate end. And so before we get into your personal experience with this, Garrett, I, I do want to know what your thoughts are. I mean, it strikes me that a lot of the new names are actual radio talent coming to ESPN radio. Yeah, which is a nice change from the past of like, who's already in the building that's a sports center anchor, and we could also slap them on a radio show with a former athlete. Uh, yeah, the, the, the names of people who, one, I think you can see that ESPN radio wanted to make sure we're kind of in the stable or we're we're on the farm team, so to speak, of Amber Wilson and Jason Fitz. And, you know, Harry Douglas has gotten a lot more play on ESPN radio as of late. And, and now it, it makes sense of they they probably knew, hey, this is going to come down the pike at some point. We're, we're going to need to make these changes. Who are the people that make sense in these roles? But, yeah, legitimate radio talent is a nice little change of pace there. Uh, you mentioned Jason Fitz. Obviously, he started in Nashville, but has been with ESPN Radio for quite some time. Amber Wilson had success in Miami. Joe Fortenbaugh had success in San Francisco. I, I mean, the lean towards radio talent is hard not to notice. I, I think the biggest win for ESPN Radio in this is the show, and this is not a shot at their talent as broadcasters. Bart and Han never should have been a national show. It sounded like a New York show even when it was on ESPN Radio. It's a very good New York show. I think it's going to do great at ESPN uh, New York, 98.7 up there. I just don't think it ever belonged on a national platform. So to, to somewhat show how the sausage is made or was made, for, at least for me, the, the station I programmed, when I, when I became the program director, we were a CBS Sports Radio affiliate. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to move from CBS Sports Radio to ESPN Radio because CBS Sports Radio was a New York radio station on a national satellite. 
Yeah. By the time I left ESPN, by the time I left my job to come to Barrett Sports Media, ESPN Radio was a New York sports radio station on a network satellite after Keyshawn J. Will and Max. Keyshawn J. Will and Max is a, is a national radio show. You could argue Greeny is a national radio show, but when you spend a lot of time talking about the New York Jets, then you move into Barton Hahn from 12 to 3, which is a New York radio show. Canty and Carlin, which is a New York radio show. Yeah, right. yeah it, it's it's essentially a, a New York centric, and and I understand why they did that. But you're right, Barton Hahn probably should not have ever been an ESPN national show. And like you said, I like I'm very fond of. I think Alan Hahn is fantastic. I think he's great. But when you're you spent your entire professional career in New York, when Bart Scott has spent his entire professional media career in New York. You're going to fall back on that at some point. Yeah, for sure. And, and, you know, I think the other thing, too, was ESPN was trying to serve that New York audience uh, to a certain extent. Like they even on the national level, they were still thinking about 98.7. Totally their prerogative. I get it. Um, I would say and, and I'm asking you this, like put on your PD hat here uh, or I guess keep it on considering that last answer. Um, I look at Fox Sports Radio. They have signatures in the midday yep. uh, with Dan Patrick and then with Colin Cowherd. I look at CBS Sports Radio. They have a signature in the midday with Jim Rome. Is Mike Greenberg that or is that sort of where we still look at the ESPN lineup and go, ah, there, there's still that kicker is still missing here? I I don't I don't know, because I think. Uh, to. To be frank, I think a lot more people hate Mike Greenberg than love Mike Greenberg. I think people <laughs> think he's a corporate shill who's vanilla on purpose. And it, I, I disagree him. with you. I, I think that maybe that's true of people in our industry. I, I don't know. Maybe that's true of people in our industry. I think the average person, uh, Mike Greenberg, Mike Greenberg is perfectly pleasant in their eyes. See, I think like to to like the listeners of my station, they loved Mike Golick. Mm -hmm. and then greenberg happened to be on the on the morning show as well Interesting. Like, okay all right i understand that to a point um it, could mike greenberg be a heavy hitter in the midday on sports radio if he wanted to do that and espn wanted him to do that yes but coming straight off of get up into your radio show where all the conversations are like surface level Basically, it's a, an extension of the TV show. I, I, I think if they wanted it to be that, yes, but I don't know that they do, and I don't know. I don't know if it's one of those, you know, counter programming measures of hey, this network is like Dan Patrick and Colin Cowherd are big people to go up against, so let's focus on middays and afternoons rather, or let's focus on mornings and afternoons rather than middays because we might not win that battle. Uh, all right, so let's take the the New York element out of this. And I do want to sort of get your perspective as a PD during this time when, you know, ESPN is coming off of long-term stability and yeah. has had anything but with their lineup since the end of 2020. No, it, it, and, and that was the maybe my biggest gripe with ESPN radio as a program director was – I, I need stability. I need familiarity. I need name recognition and appointment listening from people who know. So for instance, I time shifted Greeny on our station to noon to two, because when he came back to radio, he was on from noon to two. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, and then, you know, eight months in, he's back to 10 to noon after, I, I don't even know if it was eight months, a couple months after he returns to radio, the Dan Levitard show, exits and he's now 10 to noon well i just got my listeners used to him being on noon to two i'm, I'm gonna keep him on noon to two because i need some familiarity stability and name recognition from the national lineup and and believe me i like i i put together espn radio nationally like you're putting together a schedule on college football ncaa 14 where you know, there is no, there is no hindrance. You can do whatever you want, right? but I, I don't, maybe my short-sighted question is, is it that difficult to kind of get everybody's contracts to coincide where if you're going to have 
gigantic changes and you know that you're going to have gigantic changes, you make them at once rather than here's a change in August, here's a change in December, then we got a change in September. That's one of the more frustrating things is that constant shifting of, okay, Sarah Spain is leaving in January. What are we going to do from seven to nine? Okay. Now that we've got that set now, you know, our 12 to three show is gone. What are you doing? <laughs> this is this is one of those things that I look at, and I am I I have really high hopes for Amber and Joe. I like both of them as talents. Uh, I don't know Amber. I like Joe as a person. Um, there is a part of me that thinks I don't think that show is meant to stay seven to nine at night. Now that means more change could be on the horizon for ESPN, but also I view those two as like this could be the thing they build as their their midday tentpole for those stations that have local mornings and afternoons. Yeah. And that's the, I, I think you're right in the, that's a testing ground. It's a proving ground. It's a find yourselves on the air, find your chemistry together from seven to nine, because eventually you're going to be our noon to three. Um, and, and I wonder how much of that noon to three or what their future plans radio wise for Joe Fortinball are, centered around sports betting Mm -hmm. Um, because it's uh, we we see it every day that somebody is partnered with vcin or somebody is partnered with betql or a a new gambling show is launched from whatever company here Uh, espn's you know espn radio is going to have to probably be in that space at some point and i think joe fortinball is a good person to to have in that space but i think you're right that that's a that's a you guys figure out who you are together while less people are listening and when we're ready to throw you in from either 10 to noon or noon to three, be prepared for that too. This concludes our broadcast day. Thanks for listening to the media noise podcast with Dimitri Ravanos. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes and leave a review and check back soon for new episodes to stay up to date on the latest sports media happenings. Visit Barrett sports 